we saw, we know what our brother Job was passing through. And he came to a climax. He felt God has to hear him. He felt that God has to hear him. And he was seeking for a court where he would present his case. A court is a place where legal matters are decided by a judge or a jury or magistrate. There are also spiritual courts. There are also spiritual courts. Each time we pray, I want to teach us this today. Each time we pray, although our body is on earth, our spirit goes. And the next place our spirit finds itself is in the outer court in heaven, presenting the case they come with. Unfortunately for Brother Job, in the dispensation when he lived, he did not know exactly where the court is. Amen? Amen. In Job chapter 23, two, he said, My complaint today is still a bitter one, and my punishment is far more severe than my fault deserves. That is why today we chose to pray for Danjima, especially as a church. After 28 years, a sinner is saying, I don't agree. Bible says that all unrighteousness is what? Sin. Sin. Even the evil thought you conceive in your heart is sin. And Bible says that all of us have sinned and come short of God's glory. Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. And who is that sinner? Because he's called a judge to lay hand on a child of God and say, I don't agree. What did Jesus tell the woman they caught in adultery? Do you remember? Go and sin no more. That's the standard. Go and sin no more. The law was against that woman. The law is against that woman. But Jesus said, if any of you have not done this, the only problem is that we are not called. Cast the first stone. Cast the first stone. At times in our hearts, we judge people. We judge people and jail them in our hearts. But God is saying today, you cast the first stone if you think you are righteous. And Bible says, you that think you are standing, be careful lest you fall. Each time I come to pray, I cry to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Only the mercy that comes from you can lead me the next day. That would be, should be our humble prayer. Not arrogant for any reason. My complaint today is still a bitter one. And my punishment is far more severe than my fault. I know there are people that are released under six months. There are some people that are, when they want to lie, they said they have, uh, they were drunk. And they set them free. But this young man, because nobody can speak for him, he has spent 27 years by January to be 28 years. And that is why we are saying no. Enough is enough. The church has a say. I say the church has a say. Amen? Amen. The church has a say. Amen? Amen? Unfortunately for Job, he's not privy of where the court is and does not know any attorney that can defend him. We know the attorney that will defend us, right? Who is that attorney? Jesus. Who is that attorney? Jesus. Jesus is the attorney. I'm going to send something 
to Chapel of Faith after church. I want every member of Chapel of Faith to watch it. After watching it, pray again for that job. It's about a young man who was convicted. He, he stole with gum. I think Beth was involved. I don't remember, but when you watch it, you will remember. He was convicted, put in jail. He had a very poor up, upbringing. And so there was no person that guided him the right way. And so he found himself in wickedness and was convicted for murder. And while he was in jail, he gave his life to Jesus. I say, while he was in jail, he gave his life to Jesus. And the wardens, this happened in Nigeria. And the wardens would say, oh, we wish the judge would have clemency on this not boy. Because his life has completely changed. And so he was in jail. And he was waiting for his firing squad. And he was told that a given day that he will be removed from this prison and face the last judgment and be condemned. The last judgment is not meant to set him free. It's meant as white throne judgment and then be condemned. Do I continue to tell the story or do you want to watch it? I'll finish the story there. Eh? I don't want to preempt what you watch. I'm going to stop it here. Amen? Let's continue with this. Job's attempts to fight complaint were in vain. Why did I say that? Job said, oh, that I knew where I might find him. That I might come to his seat. Yes, Job's plight was pitiable. Likewise, our plights, our situations can be hopeless. Before God brings a judgment, he's not a careless judge. He contemplates to come and see whether what he's hearing is right. Each time we gather, God also comes to check on us. Because there are things the enemy is accusing us of which we don't know. And that is why I'll advise you live a holy life. Live a sanctified life. Make sure there is nothing holding in your heart. I repeat, God is no respecter of persons. Be careful. Don't run this race in vain. I repeat, do not run this race in vain. If your head is so so I don't hear, I don't understand. And if your heart is so stony, the day you step to the doors of hell, you will cry. And once we step in there, <laughs> no return. Once we step in there, no return. You see, I keep repeating this, and I'll continue to repeat it. God don't care how many people are going to heaven. He wants all of us to go to heaven. But if only two comes, he doesn't care. He's the creator. He can recreate. And that is why when the children of Israel chose to murmur, he told them, you know what? From 20 years up, nobody's going to see the promised land. They all died in the desert. And that is why in the days of Noah, they chose to live in sin, all types of sin. What happened? He said, Noah, prepare that ark. Get some animal. I'm going to wipe the remaining people. He is still the same God. Fear him. Reverence him. Keep his word. Don't mess with his word. Don't think we have come here for party. Don't think we have come here for, 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 for food. Don't think we have, come, we have come here to worship God, the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God that told Moses, you know what? You are not going there. You and your brother, all of you, you are going to die. How good was Moses speaking to God face to face? But he came to a time, God said, you know what? Because you did not obey my word. Because you did not obey my word. You are not going to see the promised land. 
If God will do Moses die, how much more you and I? If God will do Moses that, how much more you and I? We are serving a just God. If we recall in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, God did come down with two angels to see what was going on before passing judgment. That's why I love God. Don't fear the prayer of anybody. God is not an idol. You know those idols in the village? If you come and give them sacrifice and say, go and kill, they go and kill. That's not our God. He comes to check. He told Abraham in Genesis 18, 20 to 21. Genesis 18, 20 to 21. The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great. And they are seen grievous. Verse 21. That I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Can you see how God functions? He came down just to find out. And did a costly call on Abraham. I want to go and know. I don't just want to sit in heaven and kill people just like that. He came down to know. When you begin to read Bible, you understand God. And you know how to live with God. And live with him. You know how to walk with God. We are meant to walk with God. And not to walk for God. When we are walking with God automatically we'll be working for him. But when we are just working for God, we are not working with him. And that is why he's, some people came to him and, and said, hey, remember, I did miracle. I, did. I said, I don't know you. Because they never walked with him. When you walk with God, you obey the word of God. You fear God. You reverence him. You love God. You won't do things that he hates. Why did God come down? He came down because a case was brought in his court. And he came to resolve it. He came down to bring a solution to that case. God takes his time to bring judgment in this world. Job's search for him reveals in Job 23, 8 to 9, that Job don't know where he is. He said, look, I go forward. He's not there. I go backward. I cannot perceive him. When he walks in the left, I cannot behold him. When he turns in the right and walks there, I cannot see him. Job was in trouble. But that's not our portion. We just came together this morning and began to pray. Because we know where to find him. We know that when we cry unto him in worship, we know that when we read the word of God, we, won't, we know that when we cry and pray, he hears us. He comes down. But the Bible says in Isaiah, contrary to the feeling of Job, Isaiah 65, 24, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. That before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. That's God. We are serving a faithful God. Before you come, before when you are speaking, he's answering. Is it in the Bible? Okay, let's check. The angel confirms it. This attribute of God in Daniel 10, 12. In the book of Daniel 10, 12, the angel told Daniel, do not be afraid, brother Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before you are God. Your words will have, and I have come in response to them. Your words will have. The first day, I want to tell you the prayer we pray today is already in God's presence. The answer is already on the way. I just read Daniel 10 12. Don't be afraid. When you have prayed, don't be afraid. When you have cried to God, don't be afraid. He will come to check. And if you have prayed in righteousness, He will answer you. 
He said, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before you are God, you are what we are called. And I have come to rest in response to them. God always, God has always made plans to attempt to our needs. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and that you get justice quickly. I read what is looking, written in Luke 18, 8. He says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Understand this. Have you prayed? After praying, wait. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? I'll read the entire eight. I tell you, he will see that they get justice. Are you asking for justice? We asked for one this morning. And not only get justice quickly, However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will you still be tired praying and waiting? Or will you abandon your praying station and head out? He is our Abba Father. He is lovely. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever, whosoever, today many Muslims are giving their lives to Jesus. Bible says, whosoever he gives eternal life. To solve the problem we inherited from Adamic sin, he took flesh and showed up at the right time. I say, when Adam sinned, God did not abandon us. What did he do? He took flesh and showed up at the right time. The book of Hebrew states, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. This place is very good. Listen clearly and understand it. So that you, you don't understand it in a compromising way. For we do not have a high priest who is, not, who is unable to empathize with our weakness. But we have one who has been tempted in every way. Just as we are. Yet, he did not sin. What does that say? What does that mean? The Bible is saying, no matter what you are passing through, <laughs> Jesus passed worse than that. And another depth of this is that he did not pass through it as an angel. He did not pass through it as a God. He passed through it as a man. He was wearing the same body you are wearing. The way you receive pain, you receive pain. He knows how to empathize. Sure. But he passed through worse things. And yet, Bible says he did not sin. Whatever we think we are passing through, like Job, the Son of Man faced the worst, but did not sin. And so that is why when you are pushed in his judgment throne, don't tell him, I was in flesh. He was in flesh also. If he never came to the world, there would have been a lot of uh, right over. He knew that in flesh, if you choose to follow him, if you choose to pay the price, if you choose to pay the price, that you will be able to do it. He knows, he knows how to give empathy. He has lived, and that is why at times when I talk to my sons, I really talk to them because there was a time I was like them because I have the experience. And that is why when I talk to fellow Christians, I tell them, hey, if you are a Christian, forgive. I was talking with a lady yesterday and she was counting. I said, excuse me, have you given your life to Jesus? Yeah, I'm a Christian, but I can spirit feel. And then, did you see forgiveness anywhere in the Bible? She was quiet. If you are living the life of 
call yourself a Christian and you cannot forgive. That simple thing. Very simple thing. Very simple. That's the most simple thing in the Bible. I just said something in uh, Chapel Trumpet of Tyndale. How many people read that method about Tyndale, the man that was uh, killed on the state? How many people read it? Nobody read it. You read it. Only one person. You read it also. Hey! I'll close that. I'll close that group. Oh, I'm going to leave it because of you and uh, no, so. What happened to him? He was told not to translate Bible into English. Because he was doing something that is right. He translated Bible into English. He was arrested. I said, we are going to burn you in this stake, except you recant Jesus. <laughs> they tied him on a stake, started fire under the stake, and the fire burned. Before they set the fire to burn, they told him, you want to recant? He said, I pray that God will open the understanding of the king of England. This happened in 1506. They are Christians like us. They, are, they went to the same heaven we are going. He was ready to die in love for Jesus. But you are not ready to die forgiving your brother or your sister. He was ready to die. He was burnt alive. What is the consequence? What is the result? Four years after, I repeat, four years after, the king decreed that Bibles should be translated into English. And many people, that was how we started reading today. You see, that Tyndale is the same born-again Christian that you and I are. Last Sunday I said, if somebody runs in here with AK-47 and said, if you are a Christian, you want to go to have go to the altar, I'm going to murder all of you there. And those who are here will go and they will take the number. You think I'm kidding? Many people have passed this through this in Nigeria, not far away, in northern Nigeria, and they were all slaughtered for Jesus. <coughs> Bible says in James 1.12 Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Brethren, we need to persevere, persevere. Job attested to this. He said and exclaimed it. But I know there is someone in heaven. I'm reading from Job chapter 19, 25 to 26. Job 19, 25 to 26. But I know there is someone in heaven who will come at last to my defense, even after my skin is eaten by disease, while still on this body. I, Job, will see God. I, Job, will see God. Amen? Amen? I want to teach us something, and that will help us as we worship. There are three ways we can achieve God's presence when we worship. There are three ways we can be transported. You know, when we worship, we are transported. <coughs> out of our body and we appear at the outer court in heaven the first way is through worship but the question is I learned this from a, a brother they called a night vigil and they were praying like I hope you are not on phone I, they were on night vigil praying and all of a sudden, he saw his body living. And he, he saw his spirit living. And he saw his body still worshiping. And he saw himself in a place. And he saw two angels in that place. And he saw members of his church in that place also worshiping. 
and he approached the angel. There were two angels. And they asked him, do you know why you are here? So the Lord has brought you to teach you something. And when you go, teach your brethren something. That each time we are worshiping, we leave our body. Each time we are reading the word of God, we leave our body. Each time we are hearing the word of God and focus, we leave our body. Because that we are tripartite being. The spirit lives. And again, each time we are praying, we appear at the outer court of God in heaven. <coughs> and while he was there, he noticed that some members of his team were wearing rags. I repeat, we are wearing rags. But that was not what they were wearing in the church, down on earth. Some there were darkness in their heart, and yet they appeared there. And that is why somebody can pray and pray and pray. It's not going anywhere. Because when you came to church, you came with anger. When you came to church to worship, you were not at the right mode of dress. And when you come at the altar court, you find that he said that some were naked. Hey, listen to me. This is true. Let's be serious in God's presence. Because each time we begin to worship, we leave. And we come to God's presence. Some of us might be naked. Some of us might be tattered. Some of us, our anger might be seen. And some of God might be... Our body might be transformed already. Because when we left, we were in tune with God at the right channel. And while he was there, the angel said, after the outer court, you're supposed to go to the inner court. But unfortunately, you cannot. You go back and wait on the Lord. With God's mercy, you'll be transported to the inner court. So there is many Christians end up in the outer court. And Bible says that the outer court is a place of judgment. It's a place of cleansing. It's a place where we first arrive when we come to God's presence and want to worship him. There is God's presence each time we gather. But the point is, how far do you go from your church? Anyone who received Jesus Christ can enter through the gates into the outer court of God's tabernacle in heaven. The outer court is a place of repentance, a place of cleansing, a place of washing away. Anything that interferes in our relationship with Jesus will not allow us to proceed. But the inner court symbolizes a place of personal relationship with God. This is the kind of this this is the kind of intimate relationship God wants with each of us. Instead of just knowing about him, he wants us to know him personally. God wants us to know him what? Personally. And after three days, he fasted and waited on the Lord, and the Lord took him. He came to the outer court. He was cleansed, and he proceeded to the inner court. The moment he stepped into the inner court, he saw Jesus. Jesus took him by hand and said, Welcome, my son. He saw himself walking in streets mixed of gold and diamond. And God said, Go back and tell your brethren while they will seek for me like Job. And they will not find me. Do you want to find God? Keep your heart clean. Worship in spirit and in truth. Forgive your brothers and sisters. Confess your sins. If it is possible, when you pack your car, wait and say, God, I'm coming to your presence. I want, I want to receive. I don't want anything to hold me back. He said, while he was at the altar court, he was called son of man. But while he was in the inner court, his name changed. That will be for another time. May the Lord use this message to bless us, to quicken us, to draw us closer to him, to understand the things of the spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen after message.
shall sing one and last. 